Hey guys, today we're going to deep dive into a game-changing framework. And this isn't just responsible for millions, but billions, yep, you heard that right, billions of dollars in e-commerce revenue. Our journey began over a decade ago. And since that, we've meticulously crafted this strategy, collaborating alongside 3,500 plus e-com brands. It's not about gimmicks or one-off tactics. Our approach is grounded in solid conversion principles that had stood the test of time. Are you ready to unlock the secrets to quadruple your Shopify conversion rates? If so, let's begin. Okay, guys, so I'm going to walk you through these all-important conversion principles. If you're watching this and some of these principles you already have on your Shopify stores, thumbs up if you don't get ready to start increasing your conversion rate. As you can see on this diagram, the more you start layering on top of each other, the more you're actually going to get those high conversion rates and achieving the results that you want. So quick rule of thumb, if you have under 100,000 visits per month, then you need to focus on conversion design, which is instilling as many of these principles as possible and big changes to your pages. If you have over 100,000 hits per month, then that's when you need to start doing a b testing start introducing these principles as an a b test split 50 percent of traffic to a page without the principle 50 percent of traffic to a page with the principle and you'll be amazed at the results that come back looking at principle number one we are going to be talking about creating irresistible offers okay so as you can see irresistible offers delivers extraordinary value making your product or your service or your solution irresistible now all of these examples are our current clients here at conversion wise and i'll explain each and every one. These guys have made their offer so irresistible that you just can't say no to it. The value is so, so huge. So instead of just offering one product SKU, they flipped it on the head. They're offering three different products for a discounted price. They offer free shipping, free insurance, free support, free expedited delivery, and you get three products for the price of near enough one to two. So it just becomes a hugely, hugely desirable offer that you just don't want to say no to. So what you can do is have a look at your pages right now and see if there's anything you can do to either bundle, subscribe and save to offer things like buy one, get one free. Also offer things like free gifts. Can you add a gift to your product SKUs uh, that you can give away to make it more desirable? Can you do a free ebook, a free VIP community, free shipping, etc.? How can you just make this offer so desirable that people are afraid to say no to it? Point number two is UX and UI and usability. And this is not one to tread lightly on. This is so, so important. Effective UX UI enhances user satisfaction. It streamlines the path from visitor to customer. You're just trying to make that journey as simple as possible. And it focuses on user user-centric design, okay? It's all about ease of use, especially on mobile. Make sure that your pages are super easy to navigate to and from. Make sure that every single page on your store, all the most important pages like collection pages, home pages, product pages, enable the user to get to the end result, i.e. the purchase, as quick as possible, okay? Can we add buttons that take us straight to the checkout? Can we go from collection to checkout? Can we go from home page to best sellers? Okay, stop trying to over complicate things stop trying to put barriers of entry into your funnels go through your funnels yourself do user testing and make sure that people can get from a to b as quickly as possible and simplify that journey as i said here as well take a look at using the correct font sizes and white space making sure that it's designed for mobile first so check all your pages on mobile make sure important content is above the fold you're using the correct spacing and making sure those fonts are big enough for us to read on mobile here's a quick case study for you this is a client's collection page of ours okay the before is the one uh with the one product card above the fold we took their collection page and we did a couple of things one we made it uh, two by two on the collections so as you can see two products above the fold well actually four but two pro full product cards above the fold and we also added the quick add the cart and view product buttons this just enables people to actually buy the perch make the purchase from the cart collection page itself on the other before the, the user would have to click on the product card they then have to click on add the cart they'd go through the journey on this we're just cutting at that step we're making it as simple as possible to go from a to b and this generates an additional $135,000 per month for this particular customer. Next is a value proposition. What can we do to elevate 
the value of our product on our store. So whether that's again, product pages or home pages, um, one really nice way of doing this is a comparison table, as you can see on the example. So taking your product and pitching it against your competitors. You don't actually have to use a competitor specific brand if you don't want to. You can see like we've done here, you can almost select like a, a, a kind of white labeled version of what's out there in the market and tell your users why you are a better product, why you are much better value for money. This can also be done in your head Headlines, instead of just saying something like product X, mention the outcome or the transformation in that headline itself. So instead of saying product X, you would say something like live a healthier and happier life with product X, whatever that outcome is. So highlight the product exclusive benefits, use uh, images and infographics. This is a huge one on your product pages on the image slider. Make sure you add some nice lines and keywords and benefits to your actual images yourself. Make them more infographic, okay? Like, you know, adding those uh, call outs to the product's images themselves really works and then just showcasing how your product outperforms those already in the market. Next up is social proof. Now, don't just think that social proof is having a review section on your page. It's not, okay? Making sure you have a testimonial above the fold. Use that testimonial to handle objections, i.e. if you're doing, doing post-purchase surveys and people mention something that's a friction point, use a testimonial above the fold that answers that friction point. For example, in this, this is a high-end jewelry client of ours. People were worried about the quality of the product. So in the testimonial, we mentioned the quality of how good the quality is. It handles that objection rules fiction, but you need to be having lots of testimonials on your pages. You need to use numbers. So instead of just saying rated 4.9 out of five stars, say rated 4.9 out of five stars by a thousand plus happy customers. You see how it just really, really enhances that social proof. So num highlighting numbers works very well. You using customer logos and who you've been trusted by works very, very well, but making sure that you pepper your page with the social proof. You can't get enough of it using testimonials in your cart sliders uh, and even on the checkouts itself. Okay, this is another simple test again on a collection page. So you'll notice the before didn't have any sort of social proof on the product cards themselves. Just by adding the individual product ratings on the after, we were able to introduce an additional $13,000 per month to our customer from the exact same people visiting the store. And that's the power of conversion rate optimization. Moving on, trust and credibility. Okay, so trust and credibility are fostered by transparent practices, reliable customer service, and show Showcasing your credentials. How can we make our customers and cold clicks uh, be ensured that we are actually a very trustable company? How can we showcase that people can trust us and they know that we're a real customer? We do that mainly using icons and text. So displaying things like trust seals uh, on, on your payment pages. So just below your call to action buttons on your product pages and in your cart sliders, adding those payment seals, you know, uh, secure SSL, secure checkouts um, on this store. Then having the seals, you know, Amex, Mastercard, Visa. I trust in those brands. I therefore intrinsically trust in you because you are showcasing those brands trust in you by taking, accept, you're accepting their payments. Showcasing industry awards and certificates. So how can you, uh, have you won any awards? Have you won any certificates? Put them on your pages. And then highlighting anything that makes you feel like a real company, okay? If you're made in the US and you're proud of it, put it. If you're vegan friendly, put it. If you're GMO friendly, put it, okay? If you offer 24 seven support, put it. If you have money back guarantees, satisfaction guarantees, anything that just makes you stand out and a consumer who clicks a cold ad and comes on your page to think, wow, these guys are real and they trust. I can trust them. Okay, persuasive copy. This one is huge, okay? Persuasive copywriting sparks interest and desire. Use emotive, compelling language. Use benefit-driven statements. Take your product descriptions and strip them out. Throw them into ChatGPT and instead ask ChatGPT to return three benefit-driven bullet points around the description, okay? So this is our client, Lionel Messi, his messy store that we work on. We stripped out the boring descriptions and instead we used emotive language language, okay? Premium quality, beautiful design, okay? Use compelling language, uh, address the audiences directly, use the word you, okay? So it's really important, especially if you're selling physical products or digital products, when you receive the item, when you start using this product, when you see the results, you're not saying if you purchase, you see the results, you're saying when you do, put it into their head that they're actually already buying the product. So this is another example of that. We took a client's a boring description, product description that most of you will be using in Shopify and we just put it instead to three benefit driven bullet points. It allowed us to pull those other conversion principles above the fold and we added nearly $50,000 in additional revenue from the same 
traffic, okay, super important. And objection handling. We've already mentioned this, but you should be doing post-purchase surveys. What this means is once people purchase from your store, you ask them a simple uh, set of questions. Make sure you ask them two really important things. One, why you purchase, but secondly, why you almost didn't purchase, because that answer is gonna give you way more data to be able to leverage on your store front, okay? Find out why people have objections. Where are the friction points and answer them, okay? Add FAQs to your product pages. Add FAQs to your home pages. First and foremost, answer generic questions. Shipping times, where do you ship from? Returns, how do I return? Do you have a satisfaction guarantee? Then go product specific about how to use your product and benefit from it. Clearly state your refund and return policies. Handle that objection, okay? And then as I said on the social proof, use testimonials to actually address common objections. So if a lot of people are complaining that they didn't understand what the quality of your product was, make sure you find testimonials that answer that the quality is incredible. Okay, you can do this very, very cleverly in your testimonials as well. And here's another little case study. This was a client of ours who uh, didn't have an FAQ drop down below the product page. So this is your product page on mobile. You'll see the add to cart button at the top. They had the tabs that had the description, shipping, etc. but they didn't have an FAQ. So what we did is an added an FAQ. We then answered a lot of their friction points and objections that people had pre-purchase. Boom, $34,000 in additional revenue per month. Call to actions, okay? These are so, so important. And there's a couple of rules of thumb when it comes to call to actions. One, make sure they're a contrasting color. Yes, be protective of your brand, fine, but don't have an orange brand with an orange call to action. Make sure it stands out. Use emotive languages within your CTAs which stimulate action. Use the word now, okay? Make sure those buttons are consistent across your whole funnel. So as you can see on the example, add to cart now, we then have the same colored button, we have the same language, continue to checkout, continue to payment, continue to shipping. Try and get those buttons in the same place on mobile so it's a very easy, easy decision for your customers to keep clicking through. Use directional cues, okay? Either pointing emojis or a chevron that just takes people directionally to that next step. It works, it's really important. And here we go, ongoing optimization. As I mentioned, if you're below 100,000 hits, try and get as many of these principles in as once you can afford to do bigger changes to your pages because you don't have enough data to quantify small tests as winners. And if you're above 100,000, this is where ongoing conversion rate optimization is a non-negotiable. It's the fastest way that you're gonna scale your brand from the same amount of clicks. Set up A-B tests or have a company like mine set up your A-B tests. Regularly analyze your analytics and data and look at where people are dropping off. How can we test different hypotheses? How can we come back with different things based on customer feedback and post-purchase sales? survey. Conduct proper A-B tests, perform them until they're stacked sick, and when they are statistically sick, put them on your store and you're going to see huge, huge returns. Guys, if you want more conversion rate optimization tips, make sure you check out more videos on our channel. And if you'd like us to skyrocket and increase your revenue per session and conversion rate, then get in touch with us at conversionwise.com and I will see you on the next video.